Hey guys, it's Bruce from You Buy a Drone. Just wanted to go over a quick um, installation and what you get when you buy the LaForge module combo. If you buy it, if you didn't buy the diversity system, that's fine. You can buy it later uh, once you realize you need it or you don't need it, and then um, you can uh, use it. Um, if you just bought the regular module, then you didn't get a beeper, so you won't hear the tones that we're going to hear, which is basically just when you control it. Um, you're going to get both the Fat Shark module and the Diversity module. Inside each of them, you're going to have a piece of tape, which it might be in the front or might be on the top. This is a two-way piece of tape. And then you're going to get the module. Uh, in the Diversity side, you're going to get the same, a module, a cable, and also a piece of two-way tape. Now the two-way tape only comes in the ones that you bought from UBAD. If you bought it from one of our authorized dealers, unless they included it, then it might not be in there. Uh, it was something I just had on the shelf and I figured I would throw it in real quick at the last second. So it wasn't something that was planned to be in there from the beginning. So some of the other retailers won't have that from us. Uh, you'll also get a the Forge style sticker the stick right on the front of your goggles. Now, I attempted to put this over the um, wires to hide them. It didn't stick very well, so I would suggest putting this on, maybe putting the wires in the bottom area of the uh, goggles, or if you're gonna mount the wire inside by cutting some slits here, then you can, um, you won't have to worry about hiding the wires or taping the wires to the, to the goggles. So anyways, let's get started, it's very simple. Um, what I like to do with this module side is I like to cut this piece of tape in half. The reason for that is, is by using this whole piece of tape, it's got a really high um, strength on it. And so I cut it in half. This way you can get the module out without too much struggle if you need to get it out. Um, and then, so if it's facing this way, the pins are on this side. I like to stick the two-way tape on this side of the, um, the receiver module itself. And then, like I said, that's just going to keep it from flopping around. I would definitely do that. Even if you do modify your door to, to do that, I would go ahead and do this. Let me get this other side of the tape off real quick, and then we'll stick that in where it belongs. So a really simple install, just like any other module. You're just going to clip it in to the pins, and then apply pressure over here, get that tape on there. Uh, the one thing I didn't do is I didn't plug in the diversity wire, so those that are diversity will want to put that diversity wire on there first. All right, so I went ahead and added that wire on there. Uh, if you did forget to do that like I did at the beginning, really simple. I just grabbed like a um, small screwdriver and kind of pulled it up a little bit so the tape separated. It's pretty strong uh, just to give you enough access to get to those, and then I slid it in. Um, obviously, this will run to the other side like that, and then you will stick your diversity module on. Now, the diversity module, obviously, it's not hitting. Some guys have figured out a way to get it tucked inside here, but it requires a lot of cutting. That's going to be something that you're going to have to figure out on your own. Same with um, putting the wires through. You're going to have to notch this door if it's on the outside. Kenny from Great 3D is working on a um, case for it, but there needs to be some design, and he's out of town right now. So um, it'll still be a couple weeks, I'm sure, before he has that available for people to purchase. Now, the other thing, so then you're just going to slide this in here. Now, there's a couple things you can do on the back side here. You can clip these down if you want. Um, I'd be very careful if you do that in case you crack the board or something like that. Uh, it, it's obviously it's modifying it and, and if you break something then it's not going to be you bad's fault. Um, or what you can do is just make sure you get this on an angle enough to where those pins aren't going to prevent you from taping this on which isn't too hard to do. Um, as you can see it's pretty flat and it shouldn't interfere. Um, so Test fit this first, make sure you got it where you want it, make sure you have access to your holes on that side um, before you tape it down. But you're basically looking for it is right in the middle of this module. Use the full piece of this tape just because this is the one that's not going to have anything supporting it except for this piece of tape. Put that right in the middle of it. Um, take up this half. It's much easier when you have fingernails, but since I'm not a girl, I don't have them. 
There we go. Get something started there. All right, like I said, you're just gonna tape this down wherever you see fit. And then that's all there is to it. Now, again, um, you can use the LaForge um, sticker. You can stick this on here. Like I said, I tried it last night. Uh, I'm in Florida, so the humidity kind of made the sticker rise on the edges here. Uh, I'm sure you could, if you wanted to get really snooty, you could glue those down or something like that, get a little bit more strength on it. Um, what I'll probably do is just stick the sticker on just to kind of hide that fat shark thing. I don't really care that people know they're fat sharks. They probably already know by just looking at them. Um, I'll just put it on there. It looks like I'll have to clip that nose piece out a little bit. Uh, just gives a nice little cool look. And then, like I said, you can tape this where you need to tape it just to get it out of your way. Now, once you got that done, you can plug it in. Obviously, this doesn't need to have the antennas on it right now because it's a receiver. It's not a transmitter, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, you hear the beeper. The beeper was going. That was just because the um, uh, it's covered right now, so it's not really loud. So once you get into the module, you're going to have some uh, the menu system, which is just going to be pushing in the button. That'll take you to your menu. If you go down to setup, you're gonna notice you have, you can organize it by the how you want, the frequency or the channel. You can turn the beeper off. Now there's no beep. Turn it on. Um, now the sign, now this is yours. Right now it's UBAD. It's gonna come default and say UBAD. But you can change this to whatever you want it to say. So, um, just go up and down on each letter and you can change that so you can put your call sign you can put your um your faa number uh whatever you want to do there i, I don't know uh, you can just do what you want uh oops get back to the end you just enter through the end hey, idiot looks like my goggle battery's dying uh and then um this feature here this is when we get the uh dual powered video transmitters that's coming out um, it timed out because I took too long. Uh, so you're going to come down here and you're going to be able to select 25 milliwatts or 200 milliwatts. And that's going to be something that comes later. It's not usable to you right now, but that's something that will come later. Um, let me grab another battery. All right, so we're back to here. I, um, switched up my batteries. Now I'm going to go down here to the setup again. And again, I was talking about the power outage for that, or the power output for the video transmitter, which will, the module will program for itself eventually. Now, it keeps going back to auto search. I like to be in manual mode. That's just where I like to be. And then I like to find my um, frequency, which I like to use 60, 56, 45, um, which should be at the end. Let me skip it. Oh yeah, that's way off. You can just hold this up and it'll... So 56.45. Now one cool thing about this is when you set this up, you can hold the uh, button in for a couple seconds and it'll save that. Now, every time I plug this in, and I'm in manual mode, for 30 seconds, it's going to admit the IR transmitter signal, and it's also going to be already set to 5645. Again, you have to be in manual mode for that to happen. Now, the other thing is that you set up is your RSSI. Now, what you'll want to do here is you want to have your antennas on and have a video transmitter available. Uh, I'm going to put my uh, Triumph on this side. And again, this is an SMA, um, so you're going to need to get an adapter if you're using the Triumph. The Triumph comes with adapters. And then on the other side, I'm going to use an immersion patch antenna. 
You can use the TBS patch antenna. It's pretty nice and compact. The only difference is it's also RPSMA, so you'll have to use an adapter, which is what I was trying to get away from using. Um, now that you have that on there, uh, it, it only stopped beeping because it timed itself out. It's not transmitting on the IR anymore. So once you do this, you want to go ahead and um, get your calibration. So it's looking for its minimum, and then you can let it run through its scan, and then plug in. And now it's going to find the high. So then once that's done, you can turn this off, and then your RSSI is now good to go. I'll go back to manual mode, and as you can see, it's not detecting any um, frequencies anywhere on the spectrum. And then if I was to plug in, now you'll see I have a strong signal. And then it's um, on plug, low signal. So you can see the RSSI works after you calibrate the RSSI. And I think I just... There we go. I hit the video signal wire so it wasn't working very well. And that's it. So that's how you set up... Let me unplug my quad though. So that's how you set up the LaForge. There's not much to it. It's pretty simple setup. Um, the diversity, you can have it select. You can see now it's only on A. You come over here. Now the green light's on there. It's on B. If you go back to auto, then it's going to detect which one it wants to use and use it. So auto selected. Come back down here to band scanner. And this is where you can kind of see what's going on along the spectrum. Um, you plug back in. So 5645 is where I am. You got a lot of stray signals. Uh, I think it's from being so close that we're gonna get in like a lot of stray signals off of this video transmitter. Um, but that's pretty much what you're gonna see when you have the band scanner on. The other thing is, is the auto search. It's gonna try to pick the best frequency for you, but since this is bleeding over, then it's gonna be picking up a couple of those random ones. It just, it's like your radio on your in your car. So it's gonna pick up, as soon as it sees a value that's usable, it's gonna stop there, even if it's the wrong channel. Um, the good thing that I would use the auto search function for is if you're at a race and you're just watching as a spectator and you're watching your friends fly and they crash out or something like that happens and you can hit the auto search, it'll jump to the next frequency and you can watch that guy until he crashes out also. Uh, that's pretty much the LaForge module in a nutshell. There's not really much else to tell you about it. It's pretty simple. Uh, most guys that are getting it probably have a, a good idea of how to use some of the functions on it and what they mean. If you don't, don't go ahead and jump on our Facebook page at uh, You Buy a Drone and um, the community there can help you out if you have any questions or problems. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it.